just want to charge our hearts so that we will thank him for his goodness he has truly been faithful and we honor him for those who are worshiping with us for the first time you're welcome those following online god bless you psalm 92 i read verse 1 to 3 it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises unto thy name o most high verse 2 to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound lord give us understanding in the name of jesus we have taught here again and again that spiritual growth please listen one of the indices as we have taught to measure spiritual growth god has taught us here again that there are only two scriptural indices to measure whether or not a man or a people are growing spiritually number one is your degree of conformity experientially to the image of the christ your degree of conformity to the image of the christ number two is your comprehension of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom these two things must happen in your life for you to be said to be growing spiritually if for any reason at any point in your christian experience you are not conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ you are not growing and even if you are conforming to the fullness of the image of the christ but you do not have access to illumination the walking knowledge of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom your christian experience will be barren and frustrated and it will still sabotage the fullness of all that christ died for so on one hand we must contend through intimacy encounters with his word to rise to a point where our lives become an undoubtable reflection of the reality of who christ is and then on the other hand we must have access to illumination light and understanding it says the entrance of thy word give it light then it gives understanding unto the simple and one of the mysteries that we have come to understand that control so many things so many results in the kingdom is a mystery that the bible identifies as thanksgiving now let me tell you something in your spiritual journey you should be able to tabulate the principles of the kingdom that through the ministry of the holy spirit you have had access to versus the results they were designed to produce that way your christian experience becomes predictable so when you talk about wealth and prosperity you should be able to define the principle that governs it health and longevity the principle that governs it deliverance and breakthrough the principle that governs it are we together now influence and increase the principle that governs it if you cannot match the outcomes you desire versus the kingdom principles that are responsible for delivering them your christian life will be barren because you will largely be guessing you see our ignorance in the body of christ is not ignorance of what we want we already know what we want but the mysteries to be engaged that deliver the results we desire we do we either do not know them or we do not understand their operation are we together now knowing them like i've always taught here is like having the ingredients for food if you have the ingredients for fried rice you have done well but that's not equal to fried rice you must understand the combination one mistake can make fried rice become something else one mistake are we together yeah. that's how it is so you must work with god to find out what ingredients are required for the outcome 
remember I gave an analogy one time I, I can't remember when um, if I want to buy if I want to make yam an egg sauce I may be wrong but I think that rice is not needed in that combination is that true so if I am on my way to the market and you sell rice for me rice is good but it's not needed as far as what I want to produce is concerned now there are many useful informations in the kingdom but you have to find out which ones are responsible for the formation of what you desire so that that certain lights are available does not mean they are necessarily needed for this aspect of your spiritual journey when a believer gets born again there are certain realities that are true and consistent with god's character but they are not part of the ingredients required to lay the foundation for his spiritual work are we together now so if someone just gets born again i'm not going to be teaching him on the principles for of, for wealth and prosperity it's unnecessary it's a wrong foundation it's like using zinc for foundation zinc is important for a building but there is a season when zinc is needed when the house is already built then you will need zinc are we getting it now so it is important that as we approach the word of god we stay with the holy spirit to define for us the ingredients required for every season of our growth he is the only one who has in his hands the blueprint of the mysteries required per time per growth you cannot guess what you think you need it's the same arrogance that a patient would demonstrate seeing a doctor when you come before a doctor you don't come and say doctor i think i need panadol no 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 you may not even have headache so you listen are we together there are times you feel healthy but the doctor will tell you you need a drip it's up to you to trust the wisdom and the sacrifice of the doctor brothers and sisters this is one of the excellencies of working with the spirit he minimizes wastage in your life so you don't invest your life doing many spiritual things that are not profitable they may be spiritual but are they profitable as defined by the season you are in he says the men of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what they ought to do let the Holy Spirit be the one to unveil the curriculum of your spiritual development it is costly to guess it is costly to copy you must work with him to define the blueprint part time so there are seasons in your life where he will switch his emphasis to your finances you may feel you are getting carnal he will never talk to you about spiritual growth again because according to his desire for you the formation of the spiritual house he's raising necessitates that you now know the principles of wealth so even if you are fasting he will still lead you back to the principles of finances and then there are times even if i'm teaching on finances in koinonia his personalized dealings with you is helping you conform towards the character of the christ so after you benefit from my teaching when you go back with him he would fold that script and keep it to be reviewed when that season is open in your life and you will continue your dealing on character with him this is how men grow spiritually but most christians don't respect the leadership of the spirit we think because a truth is spiritual it is applicable now no not every truth is needed at every time the holy spirit must prioritize truth like a spiritual house then you will find out if you follow him i guarantee you you will never miss out on any area there may be seasons where you think you have not known certain things yet just walk with him because by the time you get the basics he will now say this was a simple issue that's why i did not emphasize it in your growth if not we will major on the minors and minor on the majors academically speaking there are different courses and we add credit units to them according to their relevance with respect to the degree you want to obtain there are courses that are one credit unit you can study them in three days there are courses that are six credit units, three credit units. That's how it is in the spirit. Not every truth has equal value. They are all truth, 
but they do not have equal value as far as the 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 requirement for your destiny is concerned please i like you before we continue to pray in one minute and say holy spirit i embrace your leadership it is it's not just important to be filled with the holy spirit there are so many believers filled with the holy spirit he said the lord is my shepherd he didn't say the lord is my colleague the lord is my shepherd he leads me a sheep does not have a system of defense it's only defense it's his alignment to the voice of the shepherd a sheep does not have horns it cannot fight his protection is absolutely dependent on the wisdom of the shepherd so he says like a sheep the lord is my shepherd hallelujah hallelujah one of these mysteries and i've shared it many times i would share it again is the mystery called thanksgiving there is a revelation about thanksgiving that many believers do not understand in the body of christ and so we have lost cheap battles we have given ourselves prey to situations and circumstances that truthfully speaking without any effort on our own would have established cheap victories may someone get this revelation today in the name of jesus christ thanksgiving is one of the mysteries that we see being practiced in the bible again and again that every time a people came to express their gratitude as individuals and as a corporate entity there was such a dramatic response that went beyond the object of their thanksgiving they thank god for certain things and god moved far beyond what they were thanking him for we see this even in the life of jesus the apostle of our faith Many times in scripture, we saw him engage this mystery and it produced dramatic results. So I want to share with us very quickly, why should I give thanks? Why should I incorporate this mystery as part of the principles for establishing the victory of Christ Jesus in my life? Why thanksgiving? Number one, very quickly, please. The Bible tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks psalms 92 from verse 1 to 3 tells us it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord and the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above so if thanksgiving is a good thing then it means thanksgiving is consistent with the character of god and worth practicing and worth living by the first reason why you must give thanks is that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the lord it is godly to be thankful write it down it is godly to be thankful it is spiritual to be thankful it's a good thing it is godly it is spiritual to be thankful number two first thessalonians 5 verse 18 the Bible tells us there that it is the will of God for us to give thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Now listen, the situation is not the will of God. Your response is what is the will of God. It says, In everything regardless of the outcome it should not affect your response give thanks for this the thanksgiving is the will of god so regardless of what is around me regardless of the outcome it should never affect my understanding and my approach of being ever thankful this is the will of god in christ concerning you that in all things you give thanks the second reason why we must engage the mystery of thanksgiving is that it is the will of god and we know that the only way the kingdom comes is when his will is being done matthew 6 verse 10 right thy kingdom come only when and if your will is being done so there is a dimension of the kingdom that needs to find expression in my life 
and that dimension is at the mercy of me fulfilling the will of God as far as thanksgiving is concerned meaning if I do not give thanks I rob God of the opportunity of demonstrating a dimension of the reality of his kingdom it is the will of God to give thanks number three thanksgiving according to John chapter 6 from verse 6 to 13 help us media is the secret to multiplication thanksgiving is the seed for more whenever you want more of anything in your life the key is not complaining the key is not grumbling the key is that you engage the mystery of thanksgiving multiplication and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what to do i love jesus he inspires me i love it every time the bible says he knew what to do it's terrible to not know what to do jesus knew what to do philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little we're reading to 13 8 one of the disciples andrew simon peter's brother said unto him there is a lad here that had five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they what are they lord i have this little talent what is it called with respect to what i need for my life lord i want to build a house and all i have is ten thousand naira in my account what is ten thousand with respect to seven million or ten million that i need and jesus engages a mystery verse 10 and jesus said make the men sit down now there was so much grass in the place so the men sat down in number about five thousand eleven and jesus took the loaves and when he had what he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would 12 when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing may be lost 13 therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remain over and above unto them that had eaten thanksgiving that's all jesus did he took the bread he took the loaves lifted it to heaven and said father thank you because wherever there is thanksgiving the grace that multiplies will always answer whenever there is genuine thanks those who know this have changed their lives overnight you see when you study the old testament many times people were punished for murmuring one of the things that brought the anger of God upon the nation of Israel was murmuring and complaining. Is it only Moses you will speak to? This and that and that and that. And they went through catastrophic events. The Bible says Jesus lifted the baskets and he gave thanks. The African culture has trained our minds to not be thankful. Are we together? Someone gives you one 1,000 naira every day. And then you now say, sir, are you not knowing that I'm growing now? You started giving me one 1,000 before I married. Are you aware that my wife is pregnant with twins? We always want more by placing demands through complaint, by placing demands through ingratitude. But in the kingdom, the system of the kingdom is such that every time what you have is not enough, the way you let God know is to say thank you. Thank you is the code in the spirit that says, Lord, I need more. You don't say, give me more. You say, Lord, I thank you for the one you gave me. And then he knows that you have authorized yourself to move to the next level of supply. Can someone say, thank you, Jesus? Say it with all your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Don't say, Lord, except you are not Lord. I must finish this year well. I must, and I must finish. No, it must be my turn to chop. No. Lord, thank you. For me to be witnessing the 16th day of December, I give you thanks. And God will say, that's right. That is the code for finishing the year. That's the code for qualifying for 2017. Thanksgiving. Demons don't give thanks. 
they never give thanks not one is not once in scripture there are some things demons cannot do they cannot give thanks it's not in the character of satan to give thanks it's anti-satan to be thankful you frustrate satan when you give thanks not only is it a sign of contentment is a mystery that acknowledges that there is a God above you and that that God is worthy of thanks and that he has more than you have experienced and that it is within his power to extend his benevolence to your life say it again thank you Jesus the key to multiplication Jeremiah 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 9 Jeremiah chapter 30 am I 19 I'm sorry not 9 Jeremiah 30 verse 19 I like us to read together it's projected if your eyes can get to the projector screen let's read together one to read and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and as a result what will happen I will who will do the multiplication I will multiply them and they shall not be few I will also glorify them and they shall not be small just because there is a voice of Thanksgiving to say Lord I have just one child now but I give you thanks not to say Lord will I die like that with only girls in my house some of those culture driven antichrist mentality lord i give you thanks there are many women who are barren but you have been faithful i celebrate you for what you have done and the bible says i will multiply them the code in the spirit is thanksgiving don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you when you get to a door you don't cry when you get to a door you don't weep when you get to a door you use a key a giant door can be at the mercy of a little key you can put in your pocket but if that key is not there that door will not open forever the key for more could it be that there are people seated here brothers and sisters who God is ready to give surprises in the next 15 days but the the next dimension of God's grace is at the mercy it says out of them shall proceed thanksgiving not complaining you see why many nations never rise our economic theories are designed to complain we shout and say everything blame who is not doing what blame this a mother is blaming father father blaming mother children blaming everybody and while they are doing that God is looking with all the love in his heart is limited by our lack of understanding the principles of the kingdom Lord, at my age, I'm earning 40,000. Is that a testimony? Your name is being mocked and God says, my God. Someone else, that 40,000 is his prayer point. Is what he put as a benchmark. The secret to multiplication is thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Number, number what? Number four. The fourth reason why we give thanks. According to Luke 17, please, 13 to 19. Is that it is also the secret to wholeness and perfection. Thanksgiving is the secret to wholeness and perfection write this down it is the last step in exercising your faith in your faith equation the last step is thanksgiving haven't engaged the word haven't spoken haven't obeyed the last step hmm. a man of God said this and I quote he said, when you are trying to call God, the last digit of his phone number is thanksgiving. Like you press 080, are we together? When you get to the last digit, 
the very last digit is thanksgiving and they lifted up their voices and said master have mercy on us the 10 lepers 14 and when he saw them he said unto them go show yourself unto the priest and it came to pass that as they went they were cleansed look at me they were cleansed but not whole to be cleansed means the leprosy left but their hands were still showing you could see leprosy on them are we together now if you saw them you tested them in the hospital it would show that there was no more leprosy but their fingers were still stunted their physical expression still showed that they once suffered leprosy. And the Bible says, and one of them, see how scarce the spirit of thanksgiving is? Only one out of every ten. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a, with a whisper, quietly and said, I don't want people to know the lesson. Uh -uh. The Bible says, with a loud voice, glorified God next verse and fell down on his face at his feet doing what giving him thanks and he was an unqualified person a samaritan a samaritan not a jew next verse and jesus answering said were they not ten cleansed but where are the nine next verse there are not found that return to give thanks save this stranger 19 and he said unto him hallelujah arise go thy way you have fulfilled the last step of the faith equation and now your faith has made you whole your faith has made you whole Are we together? Yeah. So you had the fibroid. They operated the fibroid and had to remove the womb. But you are alive. Yes, you are alive, but there's no more child again. Medically speaking. Is that true? The Bible says the woman returned and said, Lord, although they caught my womb and I'm alive, thank you. Take it to the next dimension. I give you praise. And then as she's giving praise and rejoicing, all of a sudden the God who made womb before makes another one and I'm standing here only because you made you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made listen there are many things in our lives that are not yet perfected and the key is although we have seen the miracle you came and you testified yes but many of us have stopped God from finishing you know how you build a house and God has a paint, has a wallpaper, has a finishing. And he said, Lord, I am so grateful. I mean, I'm so happy that I'm inside. And God says, do you know, if I show you the picture of this house, the, I'm, I'm still yet to paint and finish. How many of you know, those who do architecture and construction, that the things you use to finish the house can be more expensive than the whole building. So there is more compared to what you've seen. There is a bigger side to the miracle. You only saw a small piece of the pie. But we complain and grumble and compare ourselves. Were there not nine that returned? He says, go thy way. Your faith has perfected you. Your faith has perfected you. Philippians chapter 4, please, from verse 6 to 7. Still on the fourth reason. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Let's hurry up, please. 6 and 7. 
he says be careful the word be careful there doesn't mean be careless is the word anxiety be anxious for nothing he says but in everything listen listen to how believers pray by prayer and supplication perfected with thanksgiving let your request there is a spiritual formula for getting your request known it says when you bring the supplication and the prayer you give thanks let your request be known unto God then it says the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding shall keep garrison your minds through Christ Jesus so when you pray having made supplications you know let me tell you something please look at me the the principles of the kingdom sometimes we look so childish that in our matured world our world of excessive adulthood and intelligence we are unable to just submit ourselves to the childlike principles of the word of god that's why jesus said you have to become like one of these little ones if you really want to inherit the kingdom if you want to walk in the experience of the kingdom you must lay this excessive um um this sense of adulthood we are not children here the Bible gives a very simple formula that when you make your requests, add it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Mm. The fifth reason why thanksgiving, number five. It is the secret to supernatural victories in the spirit the secret to supernatural victories brothers and sisters let me tell you i can tell you this from the authority of god's word this ministry and in my own life one of the cheapest ways to command victories over the powers and the forces of darkness is to properly and scripturally engage the mystery of thanksgiving very very powerful truth second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 second chronicles 2 22 to 24 and then we'll look at psalm 92 1 to 15 but we'll just look at 1 and 3 10 and 15 second chronicles 2 verse 22 to 24 sorry second chronicles 20 verse 22 to 24 media are you with us second chronicles 20 thank you 22 to 24 this was jehoshaphat listen the victory that was commanded listen and when they began to sing and to praise the lord said what ambushments against the children of ammon moab at mount seir which were come against judah and they were smitten look what happened 23 do you know while this was happening the children of israel were not seeing it they were at the other side of the mountain giving thanks and saying you are good and your mercy endures forever and then at the other side god was commanding great victories for the children of ammon and moab stood up against the inhabitants of mount seir utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of seir everyone helped destroy imagine with me how the last two died everyone helped destroy another as if it was a charm you just fight your three of us plan to go and destroy pastor alpha we're tired of what god is doing in his life and we summon whatever arsenals we have and instead of him wasting his time on profitless things he engages thanksgiving and while he is doing that something is orchestrated makes me kill her and then i turn and we discuss who dies first she kills me and kills herself now i hope you know that these guys were warriors they were not children who were hungry they were trained soldiers you know how long it took for them to mobilize themselves and say let's come together 
as a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and destroy Judah, the city of praise. And while all of that were happening, they listened to a prophet of God and he said, look, set the singers and the priests. Is that how you go to fight? You put men of war and then women and then children. That's how you fight war. But he says, this kind ah, reminds me of Psalm 149. He says, let the high praise of God be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands. Right? To bind their kings with the fetters of iron and to execute vengeance upon their nobles. He said, to, to um, paraphrase it now, to execute upon them the written judgment. How the enemy will be defeated is none of your business. Your part is to engage obediently. He says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Hallelujah. This was perfectly adumbrated, Ejimi, in the story of Esther and a wicked man called Mordecai. Are we together now? Yeah. And uh, Haman, I'm sorry. Haman was plotting to annihilate the Jews and he leveraged on his influence with the king. And while all of that conspiracy were going on, news got to, to Esther. And instead of her to go and murmur and say, Am I your wife or not? Say, Am I, you are my wife. Say, I, Will they kill my people? Just that's how many women will complain. Vashti did it, she was out. It will happen to anybody because we are all women in the spirit. Vashti did it, she was shown the way out. But look, look her. You know why she excelled? She listened to Mordecai. The same way the church prospers if we listen to the Holy Spirit. Mordecai was playing the position he started advising her right from scratch referred her to hey guy that's how she got to the palace she listened to Mordecai at a point in time she even wanted to be rebellious but she came back to her senses and then she went and met him and said oh king I want to flaunt your glory there's I, I want to let the people see how excellent you are king said go ahead and when she gathered all the people the king looked at her paraphrasing and said keep doing this thing every time do it again you see kings were stupid twice in scripture one when they took wine the other one during their birthdays there was a kind of dance that kings received that they did not seek advice kings were wise people they used divination to make judgments so when a king vetoes all the astrologers a lady danced her way to remove the head of a prophet. A prophet, but a dance removed his head. There were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped. Someone here is giving God thanks and you will go back and see a rearrangement. That's not how you left things. That's not how you left things. You left bills. You left sickness. You left all kinds of things. But while you were engaging the mystery, somebody is being forced to wake up from his sleep and saying, how long will you keep disobeying me? You must bless my daughter. Here's her account number. See it in a dream. 002571. You are dancing here. I know some of you don't believe these things happen. You see, there's a way you disobey God so much that you don't even know that certain possibilities exist. When Samuel prophesied to Saul, he said, on your way going, it will coincide with two men, all of them holding loaves. They will salute you and give you as if they don't know what to do with it. That's what happens when the light of God shines upon you. Men will bless you for reasons they cannot explain. That's how Pharaoh blessed the nation of Israel. It was like a charm. That's why when they left, he said, what did I do? Something was at work. Released through thanksgiving. When they conquered the nation of Israel and drowned them, Miriam raised up a song. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider have been thrown into the sea. God said you are ready for the next level when they murmured they were in trouble 
Are we together now? Very quickly, let me give us three biblical ways to show gratitude. Three biblical ways to show gratitude. Number one, we'll look at a few scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22, the A part, and then Psalm 96 verse 3. The first way to show gratitude is through testimonies. Testimonies. Testimonies are a way to demonstrate thanksgiving and gratitude. Read with me please, the A part. One to go. I will declare thy name unto my brethren i will declare it i won't be silent god has been good to me i won't be silent and say let them not say i have I'm, I'm bragging too much it's not a lie he was good to me he is good to me and i still want him to continue to be so i engage thanksgiving you know sometimes we allow people's cynical attitude make us guilty to sincerely express the goodness of god how many people are afraid to say what God has done in their lives because there are all kinds of people with wicked hearts the moment you say I was sitting down someone just brought the car keys of a house you say, where is the house show us the picture all these liars who just come and speak you know people are the, the system of Babylon has trained people to hate the joy of others they may be sincere people you just watch someone buy a suit that he couldn't have afforded before and he said hey, be careful lo. it's only God that knows what everybody is why must you be cynical testimonies are powerful provided they are communicated with a sincere heart when your motive is to come and waste time and make noise then that does not glorify God but when God has done good things in your life brothers and sisters let me tell you you perfect every happening and the dealing of God in your life through testimonies Psalm 96 verse 3 quickly please Psalm 96 verse 3 it says declare his glory among the hidden his wonders among all people declare it declare it declare it when you stand to testify it's not pride you're not bragging provided you don't tell lies and you don't behave childish you come before the people of God look look what God has done for me I didn't expect that I'll be eating right now but look at what God has done look at the faithfulness of God and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy meaning it has capacity to impart faith and reproduce itself so when someone is listening to you and seeing let your light so shine before men that they may see and then through it Give your father glory. The moment you hear the testimony of someone, cancer, HIV, whatever, and then healed supernaturally by the power of God, you now sit down and see how you have been insulting God simply because you have a breast lump. And you say, no, 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 no. But it, it, I mean, if someone was healed of A, B, C, D, all at once, my God is faithful. And you lift up their spirit. Testimonies are powerful, brothers and sisters. There are many people who receive so much from God but refuse when you were going through the challenges you told everybody including those who could not help you now that God brought a miracle he said no I, I'm, my nature is not to say anything I'm, I'm a quiet person by nature God does not just want you to keep quiet over what he has done how will they attest to the fact that he is faithful are we together now number two the second way to show thanksgiving is to sing praises write it don't wish praises don't recite praises the bible tells us how to praise god he said sing praises Turn your testimonies into songs. Turn your testimonies into melodies. Still, Psalm 22, 
verse 22, the B part. And then we'll look at Psalm 28, verse 7. Please quickly, Psalm 22, verse 22, the B part. It says, in the midst of the congregation, I will... It didn't say, I will praise you in my room alone. I will praise you. I will sing. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. He said, therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with, what is the tool of praise? With my, not just the song of worship team. There are times your gratitude will compose a song. With my song will I praise him Psalm 105 verse 2 let me give you a few scriptures to really help you there Psalm 105 verse 2 sing unto him sing psalms unto him talk ye of his wondrous words he says sing unto him bless his name sing unto him let him know you are so grateful you have converted your gratitude to a song two more scriptures i found this and i think it was quite interesting first chronicles 16 verse 9 first chronicles 16 verse 9 oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh says sing unto him sing psalms talk of his wondrous works did i we've read that already psalm 69 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 psalm 69 verse 30 i will praise the name of god with a song i will magnify him with thanksgiving so you sing praises unto him number three the third scriptural way you express thanks and gratitude is through your seed through your giving through your seed through your giving psalms 116 verse 17 through your seed your giving sacrificial quality heartfelt giving not something you yourself cannot give yourself i will offer unto thee there is something called a sacrifice of thanksgiving and i will call upon your name a sacrifice of thanksgiving amos chapter 4 i found this scripture and it blessed me so much verse 5 amos chapter 4 and verse 5 it says and offer what a sacrifice of thanksgiving with living and proclaim and publish the free offerings for this like at you O ye children of Israel it's not possible for us to get CEV I wish we could get any other version a particular version put it in an excellent way but it says offer this one you are not singing offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and then it says publish a free will it says i also oh, no 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 verse you're making a mistake verse five media 
Well, it's the same thing, right? Just, just, it's okay. Just, just leave it. That's all right. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Do you know, let me tell you something. According to scripture, now, even in the New Testament, men prayed and they sacrificed. Two things that went hand in hand. Prayer and giving. Remember Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. God told two reasons why he attracted the presence of God. Number one, your giving. Number two, your prayers. The, the, the scripture we read before this says how that I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, then I will call upon your name. Giving and prayer go hand in hand. But simply because we have listened to people who have insulted every man of God, written rubbish, junk journalism, publish every kind of nonsense to think that men of God are out to just manipulate people and here and there I know that you will find excesses here and there but it still does not negate the fact that it's a principle there is a dimension of your speaking that only your seed can speak that you celebrate God and you thank him for his faithfulness and bring out a seed if it's not sacrificial, it's not a seed of thanksgiving. The Bible calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I want to challenge everyone here. As God grants you grace before you finish this year, if not today, find a sacrifice of thanksgiving. In fact, frankly speaking, that is the standard way it should be done. You shouldn't just talk about it and say, wow, this is nice. I love you too much to not tell you the truth. Do you know, while I was studying this, already, I gave my own sacrifice before I came. And the interesting thing about me and God is, I don't choose what I like. You may not have faith for that now, but may God grant you grace to grow to a level where you allow God to decide everything, including your giving. He decided your wife he decided your job why not your money <laughs> you see the parts you have not given God is where you will not get the best of him hallelujah something dangerous happened to me this evening because while I was talking with the Lord and I said oh I just felt it in my heart I said no 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 the people of God it's important to challenge them on that wise and I just remembered every true shepherd must lead the way and I said, okay, Lord, so what would you have me give? Very interesting, eh, Jimmy. God did not tell me what to give. He told me what should be left in my account. This is like, this is like maybe 30 minutes before I came here. And off it went. Oh, no, come on. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. belongs to you oh. so I gave it with all joy thanksgiving two minutes accident will scatter your life they will use that money to bury you and fight over the change <laughs> are we together you leave it for a foolish person who has no discernment and wisdom. That was the frustration of Solomon. He said, I've worked so hard to build this. Now I would die and give it to an irresponsible son who didn't go through what I went through. He said, this is vanity. I'm cheated. I'm still rich, but I feel cheated. Because, I mean, how can I just give somebody who has no sense? Let me digress a bit and challenge you make him lord of everything make him lord of everything it is foolish to surrender part and leave part god does not need your money he doesn't need your fame anything given to god is well taken care of god is a good manager our fears and insecurities which are a sign through faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice it takes faith to give that you trust God so through your seed let me give us one more 
the fourth way that we give thanks is by continually seeking him and promoting his interests. First Chronicles 16 verse 11. By continually seeking him. By seeking him is not like he's, he's missing. Seeking him is simply a, a figurative expression to communicate your desire for the depth of more of him. I'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more lord i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more 16 verse what did i give you 11 not 12 seek the lord and his strength it says seek his face continually not when the money now comes you know it's amazing how people seek god when they are trusting him for certain things we've dealt with this it has become an anthem that when your pursuit for God is tied to certain results, when you get the result, I'm seeking God because I want to twist his hand and force him to give me this lady to marry. The day you marry her, you set a goal and you achieved it. That goal has been achieved. There is no impetus to seek God again. I'm seeking God because I want to be a millionaire. Right? The moment you have a million naira or a million dollars or whatever, that's the end of it. You shouldn't seek him again. Why seek God when you have all the cars and houses? Why seek God when you have eight, nine, ten zeros in your account? Foolish people seek God for things. Foolish people, not bad people, foolish people seek God for things. Never seek God just for things. Lord, I am seeking you because if you are God, you must give me this pure water. No, 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 no. Don't try to twist his hand. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. He says for the Gentiles run after these things. And your father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, if you seek the kingdom of God, the word righteousness there, it's not just talking about righteous standing. It means God, God's modus operandi, his principles. You seek his kingdom, his influence, and you also seek to understand his principle. In doing it, you will find the keys that will cause other things to be added. Hallelujah. Don't seek God for things. Seek him and seek to promote his interest. That's why we are called ambassadors. A true ambassador is committed to promoting the interest of the nation he represents an ambassador does not have an agenda of his own if at any point an ambassador is found having an agenda of his own he's a rebel he's a rebel the bible calls us ambassadors god has an intention there is something he's doing and we must plunge our entire lives to see his purposes fulfilled brothers and sisters listen to me it is not only important that we bless God and thank him. It is important that we praise him with understanding. It is important that we thank him with understanding. When you thank God in ignorance, the power is released through knowledge, not the motions. Knowledge, the revelation that backs what you are doing. So you can be dancing around. And not know why you are dancing and sweat by his mercies and out of his love he will bless you but in his system everything that is not done with understanding is the same as not doing it so if I give without understanding is the same as not giving if I sing without understanding is the same as not singing don't just do things have the understanding that makes them powerful just like many people say in the name of Jesus rise up and walk it's not just speaking with understanding hallelujah God has been so faithful 
in my life in this ministry in our lives we will not only be disobedient we will be wicked if we are not lavish in expressing our gratitude to him not just by dancing but that you take your entire heart and put it on a tray and lift it up to him and say lord you deserve everything i was just thinking of the faithfulness and the mercies of god we have traveled this year like none other the deliverances of the lord you hear the testimony that the lady came to share their truck do you know do you know how easy it is to die when god is not protecting you you can have a boil on your neck and die because the devil takes advantage of anything that gives him entrance people just had headache my head my head the wife goes to soak towel and comes out and meets a dead man thanksgiving we trivialize a lot of things people crying recession things are not going well there are people i think it was eddie one time we we're going to kaduna and he told me that um, some neighbors or so were begging for rice i'm not saying begging you for money they come with a cup and say give me two or three or four cups my wife and my children are about dying but then the mercies of god some of us quarter to it finishing something happens again that was not even tied to your tithing because some of us have not been faithful at all yet his mercies you know when you know the mercies of god you will really love him you will really really love him brothers and sisters in the next two or three minutes we are going to rise up and i want us to so lavishly worship him and thank him just two or three minutes and then i'll just speak over our lives if we miss out i know you have danced you have jumped around but right now i want you to just reflect in one minute on the faithfulness the goodness the kindness It's grace, your grace, Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Sujana nena ke. Sujana, Sujana. Godia nena ke. Godia, Godia. Sujana nena ke. Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Suchada nena ke, Suchada, Suchada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Suchada nena ke, Suchada, Suchada, Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, Suchada nena ke. Godia nena ke, Godia, Godia, na gode, na gode, na gode, na gode, na gode, ya Yesu na gode, na gode, na gode, na gode, na gode. Godia, 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 Godia,
voice and begin to count your blessings. Lord, I was in front of that car. It would have killed me. I know it was not my faith, but your mercies. I watched you raise school fees for me in a way and manner. I saw that cross waved. Are you ready to worship him? Count your blessings, Koinonia, for the job you gave me. You changed my financial status this year. You opened my eyes and gave me understanding. I got born again this year. I got filled with the Holy Ghost this year. I understood the word of God this year. For multiplied grace. For uncommon influence. Pray. Tell him thank you. My father and my mother came back this year. They were at the verge of divorce. 
but by your grace you stepped in worship him Jesus I say thank you I never had any plane crash no car accident you gave me a new house this year you gave me accurate knowledge Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus over my life. I watch the power of witchcraft broken. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to him. Come on, worship him, Koinonia. Victory belongs to Jesus. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, oh, oh, oh. For the next two minutes we are going to thank God as a family we have seen the hand of God in mysterious ways this year miracles upon miracles changed lives men and women here bodily entered into dimensions in the spirit lift your voice and thank God for koinonia for victory for victory for influence for grace ha. Victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. You know, brothers and sisters, time will fail me to begin to tell you the things that God has done for us as a ministry. Influence, favor, access, multiplication of grace. When the media department was submitting a progress report preparing for the dinner, one of the most touching testimonies is that as far as the moment any teaching is uploaded online an average of 1 million downloads within the first 24 hours no publicity no sir if I by the finger of God brothers and sisters we have seen answered prayers it was here you dropped the request Yet the answer was waiting for you at home. And you saw miracles. People transformed by the hand of God. I don't know about you. But brothers and sisters help me. Thank this God in one minute. And say Lord thank you. Epochal teachings that have come. The mysteries of the kingdom building men and women some of you have seen your lives changed you've seen the anointing at work in your life mighty dimensions of grace 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. I want you to thank God for your family. I know some of them are not here on their behalf. If you ever lie to me and say you did not see his hand this year, you will not be fair. You know what January was. You know what December is right now. Lift your voice and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shakata barata. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you for our families. Many got born again this year. Many got filled with the Holy Spirit. Many found direction for their lives. The word you speak turns things around. Help me. Fans to thank him for the balance of the year into 2017 because you must get there. Don't ask, don't ask. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Your promises are yea and amen. And I said, Thank you. No devil will stop my eyes from seeing it. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise in advance that sickness will not go with me to 2017 I give you praise are you giving him praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have given God praise. I want to release something upon your life that you will take back home. For when you give him praise, you provoke a dimension of his glory. You provoke a dimension of his grace. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. You have given thanks. It's time for you to carry the anointing and the grace that will help you finish so that you don't go home crying again. You go as an ambassador. Listen, listen. On Tuesday, I had a great time in the prayer department, inside, outside, any of the overflows. I want you to be very sensitive now. I want to pray for you. The prayer department, I had a great time with them. And one of the things I shared with them, listen, is that the level of grace and unction you carry defines your possibilities in this kingdom. Not just the name of Jesus. Listen, please. Our possibilities are defined by the level and the kind of unction that is at work in our lives. Are we together now? Mm. $100 and 100 
naira are all the same denominations but not the same value are you getting what i'm saying now every challenge you face that is lower than the level of the grace and unction you carry will be solved but every challenge you face that is higher than the level of grace and unction you carry will not be solved scripturally you will see that it should be solved but the dynamics of bringing the result to your life is that you must upgrade through understanding and impartation to a level that will afford God to release the possibilities at the level that you desire are we together now our lives are limited by the level of grace and unction that we carry from January to December God has been faithful over our lives some of you now are going home there are all kinds of yokes of darkness waiting to mock God like they did last year but you are going back with an unction so that what could not happen last year I want you to believe what I'm telling you our possibilities there are some of you if you do not introduce the anointing you are about to receive in your family they will not celebrate Christmas well because there are orchestrations of hell but for your presence and so you appear there and introduce a mystery that disarms principalities and powers your understanding and the anointing are the keys you need to command victory your understanding and the anointing not just the anointing not just your understanding they work together like your left and right hand so an anointed life with a wrong paradigm will limit its operation a healthy paradigm with no anointing will stimulate the the expectation of possibilities that may never happen you need both a renewed mind which you have received all through this year please I like you to pray one minute with your heart open and say Lord I desire this grace let let it come upon my life and make the difference the difference I have given you praise please pray hallelujah hallelujah I will speak over everyone but let me just pray for the heads of departments just the heads of departments and the maybe the ministers please quickly quickly just in one minute I feel like doing that for them and then I'll just pray for everybody at grace There is an unction from the Holy One. They have walked in measures of grace. Join them, Pastor Alpha. Femi, join them. Promise, join them. Father, you have honored this house. You have brought grace upon us. Lord, I pray that the leaders will carry strange levels of grace. Please believe what is coming on you. Don't trivialize it. I will pray for you. Strange grace. Grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. Strange grace. 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 In the name of Jesus. For the next level from your spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ strange grace strange grace by the power of the Holy Ghost fire strange grace 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 for the next level in the name of Jesus Christ fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace fresh grace for the next level lift your hands please everyone lift your hands in the name of Jesus the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing smoke and it's coming on people 
the Lord is saying this is a prophetic grace. Lord, I release my hands right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Take it. I place it upon your spirit. Receive that grace. Prophetic grace. Privy to insights in the spirit. Privy to insights in the spirit. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. I want to pray a prayer that everyone should release. There is a grace that releases the creative power of the word of God. Not the revelatory power. Revelation informs. Creation makes. If I tell you God said this will happen. Listen, I want you to believe me. I'm about to release something on your life that when you speak there is a kind of unction that can leave your words and create realities not inform people it will happen I stand in the name of Jesus under this apostolic and prophetic anointing father inside and outside let men be baptized into this realm of reality receive that baptism right now creative dimensions creative dimensions inside outside receive it in the name of Jesus 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 it's not just speaking there is a level of grace I want to pray for you God has shown me favor this year in my life in a way and a dimension that I can only give him glory father I pray that Esther anointing that causes men to arise mysteriously in the name of Jesus take that anointing to your homes take it in your life Papa, take it, take it. You can't stand it. It must come upon you. It will land upon your spirit, man. That Esther anointing. That Esther anointing. Help them, please. Please help that lady someone. In the name of Jesus. Aaron, that anointing is coming on your wife. An angel of the Lord is pouring that oil upon your wife. It's a new season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. A strange season of favor. I hear my spirit restoration. 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 The mantle is falling. Restoration. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Restoration inside and outside. I don't care what has left you. Help that mother please. Restoration of gifts. Restoration of dimensions. Restoration of levels in the spirit you once carried that have left you. I release that grace on you right now. Strange restoration. A level of wisdom that you have never seen in your life illumination by the spirit to know what to do part time wisdom manifesting as divine direction ay, 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 ay. divine strategies receive it right now in the name of Jesus know what to do I command your spirit to know what to do by the illumination of the word of God I put the word of God upon your spirit and I command access to light access to illumination every prophetic word that came upon your life in January and is yet to find expression in the name of the Lord God of heavens between now and 31st December let there be a performance a strange performance a strange performance a strange performance Ooh. 
I pray for you. The mystery of exemption. That when men say there is a casting down. There is an anointing that can exempt men. I decree and declare that as that unction comes upon you. You are strangely and evidently exempted. Strangely and evidently exempted. In the name of Jesus. I'm praying. Anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death. The spirit that snatches the lives of men. 28th, 29th, 30th. Where men die. Some even December 31st. By 6 o'clock. I command in the name of Jesus. I forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone anyone marked for death here i extend your life by the word of the lord i extend your life in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you listen some of us are going to the village now listen we are not in darkness as to the wickedness that is in villages the spirit of god is doing something in this lady there is restoration that god is bringing there are people who are going to villages and there are wicked spirits enforced by the presence of men don't say it does not exist that snatches the way people go peacefully and return back divorced i pray for you whoever plays with your life i stand upon this altar i command the earth to open up and swallow them i say it again any man that makes any enchantment any invocation over you or your loved ones the earth will open and swallow them I was talking with a lady today we're rounding up who shared something very touching with me where she comes from there are certain rules and regulation there are some trees you don't touch you touch those trees by mistake you pay for it with barrenness or something mysterious so if you mistakenly just see orange or guava and you decide to pluck it and eat it that will be the end of it she said the ground the soil where their compound is their house that you can stand there if anybody stands on it or something and makes invocation except somebody anointed intervenes it must happen and then some i think a relative to them now went and stood there and made a pronouncement over the family whether there was something about building house and he said whoever builds that house that as he's reaching sink level let the person die i said they should go to the village and tell that man that they met someone called joshua selman search through witchcraft they call your name they die like chickens i tell you they call your name they die like chickens Don't let men threaten you with nonsense. Value what you have. A man born of a woman, it exists and it will work until your life bails you out. But let me tell you something. I say it again. I don't know who has said what. Job said he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men. I decree and declare and I reverse any pronouncement made over any family in the name of Jesus Christ <laughs> hallelujah a lady told me something the other day that there is I think a clan or a family where some people come from whether they are cursed or something they, they cannot marry they can't do I, I think she was telling me something like that for doing nothing once you are born into that family they say a curse is on you and truthfully speaking if someone marries you or whatever it is that's the end of it now what did you do wrong did you decide your bet somebody did something somewhere and now you are a victim of a stupid statement 
Everybody shout no way. Shout it no way. Listen. Some of you have allowed that lie. That's why you don't prosper. Hold on please. Let me just talk for one minute. This thing is boiling in my spirit. There are people who will not break certain barriers because someone has indoctrinated you into believing that there is a covenant of poverty. And truthfully, the devil has leveraged on your thinking and you are seeing it happen. And it's true. There are families like that. You do everything, it will not work. But in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I prophesy over your life. I don't care how long it has been. Break that barrier in the name of Jesus. Break that barrier in the name of Jesus. Listen, don't think I'm just talking. I understand witchcraft. I've told you, my grandmother was an idol worshiper. She used to brew beer for masquerades. So don't think that they gave birth to me inside plane. I was just flying and enjoying myself. I've told you how demons, witches and wizards used to oppress me. As a man of God, preaching with anointing. Come on now. Whatever the devil has taken from you, I don't care when, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says if you catch a thief, he must return tenfold. I command supernatural restoration now. This year will not end till you are restored. Fully restored. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for you. The grace that distinguishes men is called the oil of gladness. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Not for the purpose of competition, but to set a standard that is established in righteousness. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the grace that has distinguished this ministry, may that grace start working and speaking in your life from today. You will travel and not even a nail the, the, your, your tire, not even a nail. The tire will not match even a nail in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are afraid, the spirit of fear, the Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Fear is a dangerous spirit. If there is any voice speaking to anyone here, you will not make it next year. I reply that voice as representing the voice of Jesus. I command that devil to be out of your life forever. <laughs> Lift your hands and give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, let's keep standing, everyone. Overflow, all the overflows. Let's keep standing. Let's keep standing, everybody. This is the last service. There are people here right now who have never please listen this is our last service this year and i know there are people first overflow second overflow outside who are saying man of god if you would give me the opportunity i really want to make it right with jesus i love him but for some reason i've derailed from the ways of god and others are saying i've never really made that genuine decision i know there are many of you outside while you heard me speak the holy spirit was ministering to you that is calling you into a deeper level two groups of people those who have never made a genuine decision for jesus and those who are saying i don't want to end this year like this i have seen the message of god but i do not want to take his mercy for granted wherever you are i'll count one to five very quickly please don't be ashamed don't wait for anyone to come you are the first leave your seat right now and god bless you as you make your way to the front quickly one God bless you. God bless you. Clear the way for those outside. I know there are people coming. God bless you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to people. God bless you. Koinonia, you are appreciating them. Two. God bless you. Keep coming. Clear the way for those outside. Those coming outside, please double up. You can follow both of the doors. In this overflow, follow the main door. And then the other overflow, follow the side quickly. Three. 
the bible says for god so loved the world for god so loved you that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life four one more count and we're done please double up please double up god bless you you are still seated the holy spirit is saying should come out win that war tonight don't fight him make your way to the front make your way to the front hallelujah thank you so much this is the greatest decision literally you've heard men of god say it and it's not just some emotional thing because we inherited it it truly is the greatest decision to not only make jesus lord of your life but to surrender everything to him lift your right hand with me and i want you to say this truthfully you are not reciting a poem there is a miracle happening right now say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you were raised from the dead for my justification tonight i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god the spirit of god lives in me from today the grace to live the victorious christian life is released upon me in jesus name let me pray for you father i present these ones to you they have made genuine decisions for your glory let today be the beginning of the greatest days of their lives in the name of jesus revelations 18 verse 4 and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people and be ye not partakers of her sins that ye receive not her plagues verse 5 for her sins have reached unto the heavens and god had remembered her iniquities lord we pray tonight that you bless us let your word come alive let your word transform us in jesus name amen quickly be seated god bless you please pick up your bios i'll be examining a very important topic we're starting a new series hallelujah it's our desire that as believers we be grounded and established in truth paul prayed for the church and he said that they be built they be grounded and they be established in truth this is what spiritual growth is all about spiritual growth is not just about praying in tongues or laying hands and getting people up the bible calls those things the basic things of the kingdom the doctrines of the laying on of hands and all of these things but there is a higher call there is a higher realm hallelujah the bible says that we be built we be rooted or grounded then be established in the truth hallelujah that's why the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers pastors evangelists for the edification the perfection the building up not for tradition and jamboree for the building up of the saints that day the saints will do the work of the ministry hallelujah that we all as the body of christ will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ not being tossed through and fro the bible says by every wind of doctrine hallelujah and so it's not enough for us to see miracles and to see the manifestations of the spirit if you build your life and your faith upon just miracles and the manifestations of god as good as that is they are signs hallelujah and our faith must be built on a sure foundation the bible says he that hears my words and doeth them is compared to he that builds his house on a rock dig deep and builds his house on a rock the bible says the wind came and all kinds of things came but he was unshakable but the one that built his house on sand 
And let me tell you something. The body of Christ has many sons in which believers are building their faith upon. And our goal is that every one of us comes to a point where we are established in Christ. That we know him. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able. That's what it means to be a strong Christian. To be a strong Christian does not just mean one who has the ability to pray four or five hours. Wonderful. It's not just one who has the ability to fast for 100 days. Wonderful. Not just one who has the ability to quote scriptures or be in ministry or walk in the miraculous. These things are good elements of spiritual growth. But there is a level of steadfastness. Establishment. Where you are grounded in the truth. Hallelujah. Where you know the Lord. The Bible says, let the rich man not glory in his riches. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. But let him that glory had glory in this. That he knoweth and understandeth me. This is the pride of the believer. That you know the Lord. Beyond religion. Beyond quoting scriptures. Hallelujah. The church has been weak and beggarly. Primarily because the ministers have not been able to bring the church to a place of strength and maturity where every believer knows God and has a testimony and a track record of a personal work with God beyond the boundaries of ministry. Your knowledge of God should not be just the God of Joshua Selman or the God of Koinonia. There is a name that must come out of your experience with God. Hallelujah. The saints of old encountered God in practical ways and they named God after the residue of their experience with him. And while it is good to know him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God of all the men of God in this country, it's time you develop an experience of being established in the person and the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Because when you know him, you will experience the fullness of him. And this has been my passion for years. To bring believers to a point where we know the Lord. Hallelujah. For they that know their God, Daniel eleven thirty two 32b, they shall be strong and they are the ones who will do exploits. Not the Christians. They that know their God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, Oh king, we will not be careful to speak to you in this matter. He said, Our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, I will not bow to you. That's a revelation of God. The reason why the spirituality of many people and of the church in Nigeria is very slippery and very basic is because we have not contended for a greater knowledge of God. The knowledge of his ways, his principles, his character and his person. And this becomes our only hope for a victorious life. Hallelujah. I hope you have a passion to know God. To know him. Beyond the things that he can give you. Beyond marriage, beyond money, beyond friends, beyond a good CGPA. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Revelations 18 how that the kings of the earth had in, intermingled with Babylon. And there was a call in verse 5. 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. That means God is calling a kind of people. Come out of her. My people. It says that be, ye be not partakers of her sins. Hallelujah. Let me show you something very interesting. Tonight I want to challenge us. 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3. Paul is speaking here. Tonight I'm speaking on the apostate church. The apostate church. We're examining the concept of apostasy. 
in the body of Christ. Apostasy talks of a deviation from the truth. It talks of the error of shifting and drifting away from the original principles of God. And it will shock you as I reveal some things to you that happen in the body of Christ. It is so important. Bless God for being alive to listen to this message tonight. Hallelujah. Paul speaks about a generation and a time in the church age where there will be a reign. There will be a prevalent manifestation of what he calls apostasy. Read on. 2 Timothy. He was charging his son in the gospel, Timothy, that he be established in truth and be a faithful bishop over the churches around. Verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. This is a portrait of the apostate church. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I want to paint the picture of the Nigerian church for you. And help me confirm whether or not I'm lying. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Without natural affection. Gay marriage. All kinds of madness that goes on. Truth breakers. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors. Heady. High minded. Lovers of pleasure. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. Going to church wearing nice suits having ushers and protocols standing having a form having bibles in their homes having ipads and ipods and all kinds of things browsing through scripture having a form of godliness say but denying its power from such turn away verse 6 for of this sort, they are those who creep into houses. House prophets. Marching from house to house. Telling every house the problem they have in the world. And leading captive silly women laden with sins. Led away with various lusts. Ever learning. Bible studies on Sunday. Prayer meeting in the night. Self fellowship on Monday miracle service on tuesday deliverance service on wednesday word exposition and encounter on thursday standing on the rock on friday sitting in heavenly places on saturday ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth now as janice and jambers withstood moses so this also resists the truth amazing that in the church of god the truth is resisted men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith but they shall proceed no further this is the judgment of god upon these ones for their folly shall be manifest unto all men and theirs also was he said but thou hast fully known my doctrine this is paul speaking my manner of life my purpose my faith my long suffering my charity my patience hallelujah 11 persecutions afflictions which came unto me in antioch and all of that verse 12 yea and all that will live godly in christ shall suffer persecution and then 13 but evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse deceiving and being deceived let's read that verse together verse 13 want to read but evil men and seducers shall become what worse and worse deceiving people and they themselves being deceived but this is the encouragement to the true church 14 but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them 15 and that from a child 
thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus 16 he said for all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof number three for correction number four for instruction in righteousness that the man of God the next verse may be what perfect the word perfect there is mature thoroughly furnished the purpose of scripture and the dealings of God with the saints is that he brings us to a point where we are mature established grounded built up in the knowledge of God the apostate church is that church that subtly begins to deviate from the doctrines and the principles of Christ the Bible says ask for the ancient parts and walk ye therein unfortunately what we call the ancient part is not what God calls the ancient part because what we call the ancient part is the traditions and religiosity of men and of denominations that also is an error and is part of the trait of the apostate church hallelujah are you listening to me tonight if you came here to be blessed if you came here to know the lord if you came here to shake out the things that caused the great to fall then welcome to this message tonight you must be able to open your spirit to receive for in receiving the word it will cause you to be established in truth hallelujah there are all kinds of apostasy in our church every kind of activity the bible makes us to understand that the next series that we're stepping into we will be examining the book of revelations hallelujah we are going to be opening up the book of revelations the word revelation comes from a latin word revelatio and the greek is apocalypsis that means the unveiling of that which has been previously hidden hallelujah it was a revelation of christ jesus as revealed to john a little bible history about john the bible makes us to understand that persecution arose when certain roman emperors began to strike against the church of christ and the first of them in bible history is called emperor nero he was a wicked and a hostile man hallelujah came to a point where they persecuted the church to a point that there was a field like a football field and they would parade believers and lose lions to chase them on account of their faith for the kingdom many were thrown into the den of lions many were dragged in carts hallelujah it was during that time that paul and peter paul was about to be crucified and bible history tells us that paul was about to be crucified the exact same way jesus was crucified and paul said he was not worthy he said they should turn him upside down and they turned him upside down and crucified him hallelujah And then after Emperor Nero, one called Domitio, the next emperor, he came in and paraded himself to be God and to be Lord. To a point that he even banished his wife and persecuted his children. He wanted everybody to call him Lord and God. So when John, the beloved, the one who Jesus loved, when he began to preach about Christ in the city of Ephesus, he began to talk about the counsel of God talk about the mysteries of the kingdom the divine life and the reality of the lordship of christ it was a real threat to the emperor hallelujah and then they caught john and paraded the people and they boiled hot oil and they threw john in it suddenly john entered the hot oil and nothing happened to him he moved freely through that hot oil and they were amazed what manner what dimension of the spirit what knowledge of god did this man have and as a result of that he was banished 
to the island that we call Patmos. Revelation chapter 1. Help us, O oh God, to be the true church. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto him, to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass. And he had sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John, who bore witness of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. And there is a blessing there for all those who read and obey the things that are written in Revelations. And John wrote to the seven churches. I'm driving somewhere. Hallelujah. Now you must understand that the way the book of Revelation was was um was broken it told him write the things that were the things that are and the things that shall happen after hallelujah the things that were was a revelation of all the things that had happened before the church age the things that are is a sum total of what we call the dispensation of the church age encapsulated prophetically in the seven letters that were written to the churches there were truly seven churches in asia minor all of the churches, Smyrna, Laodicea, and all of Pagamos, all of those churches, they were real churches that were planted by the apostles in Asia. But then prophetically, every one of those churches was a representation and a type, a dispensation of different ages in the church age. Are you following me now? And so he began to write. To the churches and you would hear the lord commend the churches i commend you over this and that and that however i have a problem hallelujah god had a burden because the church of christ although they were walking in grace although they were walking in power certain men began to come in orchestrated by satan himself and if they began to be injected into the system they talked like apostles moved like prophets prophesied like great men but paul said that these ones do not belong to us because their gospel and their message began to deviate the body of christ are you following me now this is one of the traits there are many doctrines hear me that many circles and ministries in this country are imbibing they teach it they write books about it these are erroneous doctrines that were sent from the pit of hell to deviate the focus of the church from the primary truth that it runs upon are you listening to me one of those doctrines was addressed to the first church in Revelation chapter 2 and Paul called it the doctrine of the Laodiceans the Laodiceans were a kind and a group of people that introduced a kind of doctrine another was called the doctrine of Balaam different kinds of doctrines and let me tell you something the church of Christ needs rapid emergency attention otherwise the way we are going to the church of christ has now become a psychological hospital where the power and the grace of god has been replaced by therapeutic psychological things so a brother can sleep with a lady and they say we need to examine the mental state and the kind of drugs and the the psychosomatic condition and all of the medical terms the apostate church we find justification for everything in the body one of the doctrines of the laodicean is where today we get the doctrine of what we know to be the doctrine of eternal salvation that once you are born again you can sleep in the name of jesus cheat in the name of jesus bribe in the name of jesus that whatever happens to your body does not affect your spirit your spirit is saved and many saints jump and we say hallelujah and many are queuing up 
and they will receive a root shock when they find themselves in hell are you listening to me different kinds of gospels came one of it is called the doctrine of Balaam there's no time but do you know Balaam Balaam was a prophet Balaam was a true prophet Balak called him and said he should curse the nation of Israel and he repeatedly wanted to make attempts but the Lord stopped him you know why because the nation of Israel were sanctified and a holy people and the shout of the king was in the midst of them and he had a strategy in the book of numbers the bible begins to reveal to us some of the things that he did he caused the nation of israel to begin to fornicate and sleep with other people are you getting blessed tonight i came to challenge you tonight and then for the men of god in this country we have a special let me show you something jeremiah 23 i wish every pastor prophet bishop pope brother whatever that names the name of christ will sit and read this scripture are you ready let's read verse 1 then we'll jump to verse 9 jeremiah 23 verse 9 verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 9 are you there want to read whoa beyond to who stop who is speaking god is speaking through the prophet he said whoa beyond to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture whoa unto the pastors that means there are pastors there are men and women of god they own parishes they own churches you watch them on tv it says they destroy and they scatter the sheep verse 9 my heart within me is broken because of the prophets now you must understand when the bible talks of prophets in ancient time there were no apostles are you listening to me why because christ has not been risen one of the biblical proof of an apostle is that he must encounter jesus christ face to face so the apostolic ministry was also incorporated and so the prophets function both in the apostolic and the prophetic office they were the only ones who god could use to communicate his counsel to the people the priest barely mediated between the god and the people in terms of sacrifice so when he talks about prophets there don't smile and say i was sleeping and i saw evangelist under my name you belong to that category and it's important to listen he said my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake i am like a drunken man and like a man whom with wine had overcome because of the lord and because of the words of his holiness this is the prophet speaking his reaction to the anger and the tenacity with which God was using to speak. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth, and pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their cause is evil, and their force is not right. It looks to me like Nigeria. For both prophet and priest are what? profane both prophet and priest are profane yea in my house have i found their wickedness therefore their ways shall be unto them like slippery parts in the darkness they shall be driven on and fall into them for i will bring evil upon them even the year of their judgment said the lord 13 and i have seen falling the prophets of samaria they prophesied in Baal. Look up. They prophesy in the name of who? So not everybody that looks at you and says, you are Pastor Alpha. And you say, yes, sir. The Bible says there are some prophets who prophesy. And there are many of them in this country. Deceiving the sheep of God. 
promising you all kinds of things I hope you are ready tonight I like the way God deals with you sometimes he doesn't tell you how he will come then you receive it down and it keeps you down let's hurry up I have also seen the prophets in Jerusalem so he was listing prophets everywhere the men of God in Zaria the ones in Abuja the ones in Port Harcourt, the ones in Wari then the legion of them in Lagos they are here the Bible is talking about them he said an horrible thing they commit adultery and walk in lies they strengthen the hands of evil doers there is no place like the church of Nigeria where we strengthen the hands of evil doers any Tom Dick and Harry can go anywhere loot from the national treasury enter our place and buy a jeep for the pastor suddenly he becomes the Holy Spirit in the church directing the affairs of men the Bible said they strengthen a man comes and meets a man of God and says ah, I'm about to embark on a trip or do something prophesy to me let me tell you something do you know because you have an unction from the Lord you can speak over people and bless the works of their hands and it will prosper but the Lord will hold you accountable because with that gift came discernment to glorify Christ alone hallelujah he says that none doth return from his wickedness and they are all of them like Sodom and its inhabitants like Gomorrah therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets behold I will feed them with wormwood and make their drink the water of God for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in the land 16 we we'll read to 19 and stop. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. I hope you understand the context now. It's talking about the false, I like the way Amplified puts it. It says the false prophets. He said, Don't mind the nonsense they are talking about. Doesn't matter how flamboyant it sounds. He said, They make you vain. And they speak a vision in their own heart. And not out of the mouth of God. Everybody stands on stage. I was sleeping this morning. And the Lord woke me up. And all, the Bible says they conceived that vision in their heart. Whose God is their belly. That vision was brewed from the hunger in their belly. And not from the voice of God. Verse 17. They say still to those who despise me. In other words, it shall be well with you. People who are obviously perverting truth. Because they drop prophet's offering. They buy you a suit. They take you to Hawaii. And you say it shall be well. A man is stealing another man's wife. You know it. You are aware it shall be well. The apostate church. The Lord had said you shall have peace that's what they are saying and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their heart no evil shall come upon you is that not what a lot of people want that's what we want that's what we run to church for man of god i came with a small offering then the man says bless you i see the lord is showing me something oh glory 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 and now you begin to jump let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. Because the Bible says, it didn't say they will diminish. They will keep increasing. And if the church of Christ is not built to be grounded, then there is trouble for us in Nigeria. 18. For who had stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his voice and had marked the word and heard it. Hallelujah let me tell you something verse 20 let's read on the anger of the lord shall not return until i have executed until he have performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly verse 21 everybody read it together 
want to read. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesy. Is that in your Bible? Or you removed it this morning? He said, I have not sent them. Joshua Selma Ministries International. I was sent by Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, all kinds of things. They say, my God and my king. He spoke to me this morning. He said, build me a people. And they are destroying the people. He said, I have not sent them. Yet they did what? They are not even working. Boy, there are ministries running in this country. One year they have established 30 branches. Everybody is running. The same deceit. The same perversion. And God's people get ensnared. Gullible because Satan knows how to lure you. He uses your lust and your needs to lure you into a trap. If Satan knows you don't like ladies, he will not bring a woman to you. What for? It doesn't work like that. He's smart enough to know that we respond to our needs. Hallelujah. The apostate church. Some of you belong to these churches. Some of you have enjoyed the things that they do. They have taught us a lot of error. They have deceived a lot of God's people. Right now, everything in the church of the living God is money. Money can do everything. The front row is determined by how many money makers or partners. Your seed is equivalent to your faith. Let me, with time I will be showing you where these doctrines came from. Because God has been speaking to many of you. And there are many of you that are just waiting to finish ABU. So that you establish that kind of ministry. You have planned it. You have calculated it. You have seen that it's 1.5 that will be your own every month. You have, you have drafted it. And so you are crying. They say fast and pray you will get power. You are praying right now. Not because you love God. It's part of the tools to add to the apostate church. And I'm speaking to great men and women. There's a lot of deviation from the truth of God's word. And many of us have seen it. We love it so much. We like a congregation that comes to massage our evil doings. And the house of God has been turned into a place of entertainment. Nothing wrong with joy. In his presence there is fullness of joy. Not fullness of foolishness and stupidity. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of nonsense that happen in the church. There are football fans that sit in church. Seats kept for them. Arsenal fans. Man you. They give offering according to everything. They shout hallelujah according to their... What, what is going on in the body of Christ? How come we don't have a voice that can rise to speak? We laugh at these things and it's misleading us. There are men and women in the body of Christ whose job is to match make. The pastor's wife. It is the one she sees and she says, Sam, you are the head of worship. Uh, Zuera, you always smile every time Sam raises a song. You must marry him. Any other thing is not the counsel of God. Now, let me tell you something. As you are laughing, make sure the Holy Spirit is sinking this thing into your spirit. Because it's happening. Hallelujah. We have all kinds of people. The church of God has become a dome for people to look for contracts. Every Tom, Dick and Harry comes and tells the pastor, he wants to sit down near this manager that comes. And they say, turn to your neighbor and say, what do you do? And the man of God, let me tell you something. Judgment will come upon the house of God. Oh, I assure you it will happen as surely as the Lord lives. That's why the church in this country has no voice. politicians know where to run to for security 
they loot from the national treasury and know who to run to a prostitute comes to meet you you are praying for her you are seen in the spirit she's a prostitute why don't you call her in love and let her give her life to christ that will cost you what she's about to give you the prophetic seed the bible tells us that a day will come listen to me i want you to know that a day will come jesus christ is coming upon this earth and i don't know who has deceived you but i'm reversing that deceit tonight there is something called judgment day there are two kinds of judgment for your information let me balance the nonsense preachers have tried to preach number one there is the judgment that he who has not given his life to christ is already condemned those ones will not make heaven but there is the judgment that will judge the works of men are you listening to me so that one is among those who are already believers the word judgment should not scare you is bringing into accountability matthew 25 don't open it there's no time but i'm showing you that there is such a thing and the bible says to those found worthy in the age to come they will be made to rule over kingdoms hallelujah we have taught all men all kinds of things you are the god of yourself bring out the giant within you you are one with christ i like you to say i am jesus everybody shouts i am jesus i like you to say i'm the galilean and they say i'm the galilean the doctrines that make the apostate church because this is exactly what satan did in ezekiel 28 he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god every time you sing a song and you say lord be magnified a lot of people say ah you're a new creation you should step into god push him he'll push you even when you do something that requires true remorse to have a contrite and a broken heart say there's no need feeling bad come on walk up to that touch your your redemption your redemption or whatever you touch and and smile back and so the leader of the choir is sleeping with every lady in the choir and touches his redemption back and smiles let me tell you something there is judgment that is coming upon the house of god yes there is and it's going to come and it will start with we the men of god and it will spread down do you realize that one of the talent that was collected was collected from one of the servants not an outcast many people's giftings ministries and many things will fade before you you will see it come in the days to come many prophets will arise as before suddenly they will see that the heavens have been closed for what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness your writing exam 100 level malpractice took you to 200 level you said glory i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus what is your concept of the sacrifice of jesus christ can i tell you something when a man of god stops preaching the things that he used to uphold he has started falling victim into that are you listening to me when a man of god cannot stand and preach holiness and righteousness the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation we want things from god we want prosperity we want money and so we have been taught that a shortcut to it is to tap into the anointing of the man of god's life and so what happens we just sit down we don't do anything right now there are prophets in abuja that collect what we call battle seed you pay and they labor for you in the place of prayer while you go about becoming the apostate church so they pray you pay them on payrolls
the man of God has prayer ban praying for him and he's there traveling around the world as if he's a tourist drinking juice changing every kind of thing trying all kinds of wine and then he comes his suit is fixed and he just flips through the scripture uh, let's look at Mark today he just shouts and for three hours of God's God giving time to his people stand there waste people's time you know how much I bought this suit you people don't know you are not yet in that level and people laugh let me tell you something it's time you begin to frown at some things are you listening to me because many of us they have become mentors unto us we love them we admire them every time we see them you imagine yourself marrying them that imagination is certainly not from the cross of Christ and there's need for radical re-editing many of us sit down and you already listen they teach we young people all kinds of things get rich quick do everything breakthrough can come for you in one week I see my car look I know what faith is I'm not telling you that there is no place for faith I teach about faith here don't I but I'm telling you there is a straight line between faith and foolishness are you listening to me God sends the man to carry his tithe and go and sow. And he uses from the tithe. And the remaining 20%, he comes and explains everything to you. He says, God is a merciful God. Just take this one and just use it and use malt. And with this effort you are doing, just use malt and wash your mother. Say, ah, ah, my son, my son. You laugh over it right now the poor in church don't have a voice they are the ones who don't have faith they are the ones who sit outside who is your father who is your mother they are apostate church we are laughing about it many of us are enjoying it many times they begin to teach us demonic things what they are teaching many people is what the bible calls new age new age new age they teach you all kinds of principles all in the name of the prophetic and many people truly begin to enter into the realm of the spirit and walk into all kinds of demonic things. Schools of prophecy where they gather people and pray and say now Aaron, what did you see? You must tell us what you saw. And then everybody truly begins to see every kind of thing. And we use those things and pervert the body. And you look at somebody who is not called into the fivefold ministry and say, Steve, I see prophet in your name. From today henceforth, move in, the, in your might. And Steve is struggling because the grace is not there. And then you tell him to amplify his prophetic by bringing a seed for you. Now he brought the seed. How many of you have given seeds to fake people and you did not get the result? everybody that blessed a true prophet of god in scripture received a prophet's reward many of our parents work hard only to come and vomit all the money in the presence of gullible and wicked prophets by the end of the month they are in your house they came for a prophetic instruction they gather everybody out how come people cannot think in the church a man of God looks at a lady and says, strip naked. Quickly, quickly, it's a prophetic instruction. And you see her hurrying up. Nonsense. The Bible lets us know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. Are you listening to me? A more sure word. It will not contradict the spirit of Christ. For the testimony, the testimony of Jesus is the true spirit, the motivation behind every prophetic word. many believers right now do not have time for them and God you know why we are busy busy trying to look for money busy trying to look for husband and wife busy trying to look for jobs busy trying to do everything the Bible says seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness those values are no longer preached
and women of God celebrate it when people join queues and they are waiting for the anointing and you see people as if Jesus didn't die for them too for hours they are helpless waiting for the stepping in of the man of faith and power Joshua Selman I'm not saying don't respect men of God but why have you made them gods to your life hallelujah a man marries his wife the man of God will not let them flog out their issues and enjoy issues everything that happens she will come to tell the man the day she's pregnant the man will know before her husband lest the husband go and eat the baby where are we going the apostate church intelligent men and women become brainwashed in the church and we begin to do all kinds of things the lord must arise and help us are you listening to me the people have come to a point where we love it so we are not ready for growth and any minister of the gospel that stands for this truth unconsciously the seed has been planted and we begin to hate those people i believe in new creation realities i have been blessed i believe it till death i believe in the operation of faith we talk to people and tell them nobody should die when somebody dies the church does not take responsibility they say go and bury the person it's a shame to our church we are the ones who live forever and they leave the person sad helpless going and he goes to meet his orthodox church that we always laugh at and then they are the one who conduct the funeral and laugh but let that person's business blossom and you will see claiming of members sheep stealing in the name of church planting everybody everybody becomes a son how come blind people are not spiritual sons to men of God but they are in our churches how come the ladies who are not fine are not submitting to the people everybody looks for the best the choicest and we yoke people with all kinds of demonic doctrines tonight there are two categories of people in this place those who will say and say this nudging in my spirit it has been there is a cry of the spirit and those who will just laugh you want true prosperity you want true power there are many young people in this country that we have been taught that a process is as a result of lack of faith so we teach people that now faith is if your faith is working the jeep should come now and somebody in 200 level is converting jeeps angry he will not sit down and read his book just shouting because we have misled them and a young man who has 50,000 that's all the money his poor parents gave him he comes to school and we put them under pressure because he's the head of department you must buy this suit with 45,000 to match our status may God have mercy on his church some of you have been victims of what I'm saying to a point that you are now enjoying it the man of God may not be fake but it does not justify the principles he's using hallelujah and the Lord brings us to help us know him righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne many people right now every time you talk about bible study a time of building in the world people begin to frown but once you talk of breakthrough night a night of receiving and taking take yours people say yes this is the kind of thing i like encounter with the spirit of elijah then they'll put semicolon speed yes we like it everything that bypasses the process of greatness and can i tell you something many of our parents look at us although they are not filled with the holy ghost but heed some of the warnings they are giving they may say young man i may not know god oh 
but I know this is not how he works. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come to reign. We do not have people who can stand for Christ and stand for truth. They say if you cannot beat them, do what? Many of you are hoping to finish school now and run to Abuja. Your blood is already hot for an year project. Ah, God, let me finish this thing. See, I will shake the country. So every time they are saying you are blessed, in your mind, what you are thinking is, let me go and invade everything. Can someone walk up to you and drop five million naira over the integrity of your faith can you look at it without praying about it and say no i love god more than this don't be too quick to smile and nod your head because many generals who have fallen gullible were disconfident are you listening to me where a man who steal another woman's wife and come to meet you and say pastor bless us uh, as a token of my appreciation i have one small one you are not doing introduction you're a man of god and so you tell them i love you but this is the position of the word of god and i will not compromise it may cost you your fame it may cost you your reputation you may not belong momentarily notice what i'm saying there are many of you right now on account of your faith people have called you stupid because you are doing the things that god wants you to do that guy wanted to go out with you and he was so rich but you went to the lord and god said no way and your friends insulted you they say you you are the most stupid lady we know in this day and age can't you collect his money and go what is there about him sleeping with you but then you stand for truth can i tell you something there is a name that god is called he's called the lord of sabaoth and he's about to step in and prove those who truly love him can i tell you what the lord showed me one time i shared it that the works of men were like heaps. Hallelujah. Somebody told me about it. And then I forgot about it. One day when the Lord showed me, it surprised me. Many men came to stand. And their works, just like wheat in the harvest. And fire just passed it. And then you just see something little left. That's the real thing that they are doing for the kingdom. Can I tell you something? You can live and be a billionaire in this life. You can live and be an influential person. You can have a church membership of 2 billion people. But it is only the degree to which you walk consistently with God that will make sense in the realm of the spirit. Are you listening to me? So many of you who have been taught that God's way is just to make you a millionaire overnight. Calm down. There is something called a process. Sow your seeds today. Build your life today. Many who cannot stay with the Holy Spirit. You can't study for five minutes. Because you have been taught that you need to hurry up. There is no hurry in this life. You know why I'm saying that? Because those that have been moving according to God's pattern will turn and find out that they are ahead of those who have been deceiving them. 
there are many churches and ministries you are seeing today the day their harvest begins to come it will shock you because they are laboring bearing root downwards there are many men of god you hear today i remember years ago years ago abu has changed years ago you see a man of god small grace you touch one sister and she falls you see one pa one pa one this one that i remember those times i used to be quiet and i would lock myself somewhere i was walking in the anointing walking in grace encounters with jesus but i knew the bible says john remained in the wilderness until the time of his appearing many people came with visions and prophecies josh we saw you in a tv station pfn remember pfn said they wanted to give us room to start eni in one of their branches all those things look like expansion in ministry but i knew that was not the season of appearing are you listening to me many of us have short-circuited our dealings and our trainings with the lord because we have been taught a false doctrine a false gospel when god is dealing with you and he has not finished you jump classes in the spirit now you come and establish a big ministry and those lessons you would have learned from the classes you jumped will bring you back and retrogress you in ministry even at the height of it every young man who can wear suit they just call him and say kneel down pour oil on him and say stand up i saw the gift of the spirit on you you are a, you are a pastor you are an apostle and now this guy just got born again six months ago and they say forget the harvest is why the babylon in him has not finished dying now he stands on stage and he sees lara very pretty lady and the old man Cain is attempting to resurrect when Abel is preaching and that guy is struggling on stage he's laughing then he says come into my office and tomorrow you hear that something happens and people will say how far Moses stayed 40 years in the wilderness let me tell you something friends we must return to the order and the patterns of the spirit if we want to last and be great a lot of people do not go through the dealings of God. Suddenly one breakthrough comes. They step into prosperity and they become fools. The Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Because they do not know the purpose of the blessings. They were not taught. Are you listening to me tonight? God is searching our hearts because he wants us not to be the apostate church. There is a church like that in Nigeria. I don't mean a denomination. I mean a group of people parading all kinds of beliefs. The church is becoming a psychological thing. Right now, you go to churches and you see the, the drawing of anatomy and they're explaining every kind of thing. Your subconscious mind, your inner conscious mind, the other one that is there, where you are hot, information goes through this place. What is your university for? And then the man laughs and says, Ah, so this is the side of me that makes me like women. So it's not even bad. Hallelujah. And we try to teach people principles of metaphysics and Christian science. Mind reading. A prophet just comes and says, Come Josiah. And Josiah comes. He said, now everybody watch. Wave his hand and Josiah goes blind. And people say, wow. That is certainly not the spirit of Christ. Because among all the things that God gave man dominion over, man was not mentioned. Are you listening to me? So that we tread the path of destiny with care knowing the word of God herbalists have found out that they are running out of markets and they now have left their their herbal joints and one suit and say if you will not come to us we are coming
there is a mountain in Abuja I think Manasseh will tell you when you go there they give you stones and you throw if by any means your stone does not hit the tree that you are trying to throw you will know what brought you there so you want to marry or you want this they bring it and, and you throw and if he hits it you will rejoice a man of God says in the name of prophetic instruction bring the photo of the lady or the guy you want to marry or the kind of job you want they say bring it now there is a place for that but this is where the boundary crosses they say now put your seed upon it and bring it put candle on top go around it seven times do all of this is that not what native doctors are doing I don't care who is doing it there is a name it's called witchcraft and manipulation it's exactly what is going on and many men of God are already building cabals there is the cabal of the prosperous ones there's the cabal of the handsome young men of God there is their group they are the ones who can shake ladies when it's time to pray in tongues they come and stand and do all kinds of nonsense tonight's message is ringing a bell in your spirit we are going to pray we have to be out of here so, the apostate church and there is a warning it says that if you do not stay and you take on these doctrines many churches have now become business centers different kinds of anointing oils different kinds of breakthrough handkerchiefs different kind of prophet's mantle they line them before you while service is going on and they tell everybody just come according to your needs but I know in my Bible that there was a time that a particular sorcerer a man wanted to buy power from Peter and he said thy money perish with you i'm not saying don't buy tapes don't buy anointing oil but if your purpose i went somewhere and the man was marketing books and he says that if you don't buy this book something will happen to the people after three days and you need to see the believers intelligent people some doctors everybody rushing why can't you just say this is my work i have labored and you can honor me and honor what God is doing. Is that not honest enough? What is wrong with saying koinonia? Um, if you consider me to be a servant of God, bless me. Come and stand and twist truth. The Bible says handling the word of truth rightly. Men of God have gone to the extent of receiving all kinds of powers. There was a case in Kaduna. I'm sure some of you heard about it. The man of God that had a special anointing oil that he will rub on himself as he's stepping into the church. Come and see power, everybody falling. Because the Greeks seek for a sign. Hallelujah. And one day, he forgot to put the oil. And then when he came, he told his assistant to quickly run. And check somewhere up and bring the oil and it so happened because of morning service the assistant pastor didn't take his bath he would bath later on and his body was white he said Kai let me just quickly this kind of embarrassment and the guy just rubbed the oil small as soon as the assistant entered the power of God began to break out and the Jew said you touch that oil Abby. not fiction not fiction To the point that the church of Christ cannot even know the difference between a true man of God and a false man of God. A right spirit and a wrong spirit. Anything God cannot give me, I cannot get from anybody. Anywhere he cannot take me, I cannot go. You must come to a point. The, the higher you go in the spirit, the more dependent you are on him and his word. He said, I love your word more than my necessary food. We must train a word carrying church. Hallelujah. 
Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. For your honesty in your job place, you have not been promoted. Wait. There will be the time of appearing. Let me tell you, when God promotes you, no man can demote you. When a man promotes you, you will need him to keep taking you higher. But when the king of glory, the one who watches over his word to perform it, lifts you, you are lifted forever. There is a relationship between praying in tongues, staying seriously with God's word, diligence, a life of purity and holiness, and the anointing of the spirit. When you see a man moving in the anointing, and you do not see these traits, something is wrong. There is no guesswork about the anointing. There is no guesswork about the word of God. Are you getting blessed tonight? The apostate church. Tonight, many of us need to deliver ourselves from religiosity and traditions of men that stop us from stepping in. When we begin to examine the book of Revelation, we'll talk about the seven churches. And we'll examine everything that the Lord forbade in their lives. But tonight, my call is that judgment is coming upon the body. There is judgment that will come upon the body. And many churches will be affected. Many bishops will be affected. Many men of God will be affected. Many apostles, many prophets will be affected. Not because God is a wicked God. Because the people of God have been perverted from the ways of God. It's time for everyone to get up and know God for real. Know his ways. Let the word of God not just become an instrument of devotion for you in the morning. They are life to those who find them. It must become your life that you say, if I perish, I perish. Faith in the operation of God's word. If God has said you are blessed, you are blessed. If God has said you are lifted, you are lifted. It doesn't matter what ABU tells you. It doesn't matter what your parents tell you. His anointing is upon your life. You may not look like it, but the word of God tells you. You stop running from pillar to post, looking for endorsements. The word has endorsed you. It has called you the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. We need a generation of men and women who when they come to bribe you, you will say no. No bribery. No corruption. Where if God takes you to a place of government, you will stand for truth. You will stand for justice. You will stand for equity at every cost. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. No bribery that you are seeing. You are in the exam hall. No malpractice. You know that you can copy and get an A and it will shift you from 2 to 2 to 1. And you say, no, I love the Lord. Not it does not matter. My spirit is seated with Christ. My body is seated in hell. Hallelujah. Where you believe the Lord. Where you stand for what is true. The values of the kingdom. The church has become a secular place. Any Tom, Dick and Harry that produces any album. Just jumps on your stage. And because we are looking for fame. We don't know the difference between Zion and Babylon again. The sacredness and the purity. Of the word of God and the songs of the spirit. And by the way, let me correct what you are saying. Many of you say, hey, he's talking about rappers. I love rappers. There are born again, spirit filled people. So let your religion not even think is what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking of those singing him. I'm talking of those who are truly born again filled with the holy spirit that christ has become the center of their lives that whether through raps through music whatever they know that they are not just musicians and guest artists using the church as a ladder to climb to greatness but that they love god for real 
that when they come out to minister i was listening to an interview by frank edwards i love him so much they say how do you write your songs he said i don't write my songs i spend time in the spirit and i receive them right now everybody wants to get money you just sit down and conjure one album jesus jesus Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my Lord. Jesus, Jesus, and no life, death, standing and shaking itself in the church. And people are just nodding. They are just enjoying it. No life. No life. The person finishes his song and runs outside and is laughing. He's saying, man, you should give me my honorarium. Well, let me leave. I have another meeting somewhere. And he said, you must give me my money in this place. We'll, we'll drag this thing. Many of you are seated here. You are musicians. You are music ministers. The reason why God has not lifted you is because you have not listened to this message. Until he flogs out flesh and Babylon in you. Then the glory will begin to come by itself. We want a set. See, let me tell you why I shout and I say these things. Because now I have access to you. Tomorrow I may not have access to you. You will be too busy. So I kill it and bring it as hot as it is. So that you can listen. It can sink into your spirit. You may not like me. But tomorrow you will bless me. You will put my children in your school because you are happy. Your responsibility will make you a blessed man. There is nobody who laughs during training. It's only in the church people laugh during training. They are happy. They say you are lifting weight. You want to compete with the whole world. You are smiling. No. Go and watch the Olympic people. For the place of training is a place of sacrifice. Sister, I know you are pretty. But permit me to flog out Babylon. Flog it out. So that your beauty can be as gold. My brother, I know you are nice. Let me flog it out. By the time i do that let me tell you something you will stand strong god can make you the entrepreneur you will be the next or third or last and the rest but then you will be a strong person this time around you will be able to stand and tell the world and say i love jesus christ next time some of you will be the bishops and you will remember you will not be some of the bishops we have in this country with all due respect. You will know the difference between God and man. If this is my only assignment on earth, I am happy and I will do it honorably. Necessity is laid on me and the word burns in my spirit like fire and I must bring it out as it is. Come out from among them and be ye separate come out the language tonight is come out from among them be ye separate don't adopt those philosophies i'm not teaching you to be critical that every time you go to a church you are just trying to watch the mistakes of the man of god no 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 god does not use perfect people his glory unwraps them and then brings them to a place of grace where they are dependent on his grace However, there are some things that are not mistakes. It's called apostasy. The perversion of truth. Be careful the kind of men and women of God you allow to climb your stage. Men of God, be careful the kinds of meetings you allow. Now I'm not, this is, I don't go for any kind of ministration. Call it pride, call it whatever. People just come and meet you and through a phone, they say there's a meeting. Seven men of God are coming want you to come and honor them the next thing you see your face in the middle of witches and wizards they use your presence to endorse evil so when people see you they say ah if joshua selman can be here that means these people are nice then after the meeting the people say ah i'm that joshua selman's friend come and meet me at home and they say yes sir the same respect that's what has been happening in a lot of churches 
a lot of things because of honorarium everything you just go because we are afraid of our reputation you don't scrutinize and question and make sure that everything is lined up in obedience to Christ hallelujah thank you Jesus this teaching will make you strong this teaching will make you great I tell you the truth it may not mean anything to you right now but I assure you in the days to come it will separate you it will bring you grace listen to what I am telling you it will bless you I will not teach you what will destroy you this may be a hard teaching but can I tell you something hear the voice of the Lord tonight one day you will know that a preacher was shouting truth into your spirit your spirit bears witness as painful as it is your spirit tells you I'm not lying to you I will tell you what many men of God will not tell you that's why we respect God in this place we know the boundaries of offerings we know the boundaries of character we know the boundaries of everything it's supposed to model to you something we may not be the best of people but we are certainly not the worst and I hope that you see a desire to love God can your life be true can you be a replica of the true Jesus life can the anointing come upon you and the glory of God will still beautify you can God make you a millionaire and a billionaire and his kingdom will still be advanced can God make you an influential person in the government can God give you the anointing the power you want the fame the influence the charisma can God take you to the nations and still find your heart oh Lord I want to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord, with your spirit once again oh Lord we want to know your glory we want to be the true church we want to offer the sacrifice. Would you fill this temple, Lord? Fill this vessel, Lord, with your spirit once again. These are the kind of people that will step into prosperity. These are the kind of people who will step into charisma. The Lord told me something. I've said it here. That son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord told me. He said, if you let men see me. He said, if I be lifted up, not Joshua Selman, not Koinonia. Don't make Koinonia an idol. Don't make Ian I an idol. Don't make Joshua Selman an idol. Or any of the ministers who are only ushers. Pointing you to the king of kings. Like John the Baptist, we are the voice of that word that cries. We are preparing and making straight his way. If you come for koinonia and all you end up doing is respecting Joshua Selman alone. And loving him above God. We have succeeded in manipulating you into witchcraft and idolatry. And God will judge us for it. We must lead you to the king of kings. The one who is above all. That all of us will stand before him. It's our job to ensure that you are successful in this life. That's why we teach you on wealth. We teach you on prosperity. We teach you on faith. We teach you on the principles of success. It's our goal that you become men and women of character. That's why we teach you on the fruit of the spirit. We teach you on the anointing. 
We want you to move and operate in the miraculous and the supernatural. That you be thoroughly grounded and established in truth. Do not be unaware of the devil's devices. We are going to pray and cry our heart to the Lord. And say, Lord, deliver the church in Nigeria and set us apart. You are going to pray for your pastor. You are going to pray for your man of God, your bishops. We are going to raise a cry. You will pray for we the leaders and say, Lord, keep them. Keep them. That 10 years from now, we will still be preaching this truth that we are preaching and not allow jeeps and trips abroad and millions and billions rise up on your feet. We are praying. Inside and outside, begin to pray. Pray and say, Lord, I come out from among them. I come out from among them in business, in ministry, pray, in governance. I come out from among them. I refuse to be part of the Babylon generation. I refuse to be part of the apostate church. That church that perverts truth, whose God is their belly. I'm driven by your passion alone. I'm driven by your passion. My heart pants for you in a dry and weary land. I love you more than ministry. I love you more than life itself. Pray. Say, Lord, I love you more than success, more than titles more than CGPA more than anointing more than marriage more than relationship Lord you have won my heart there's no going back in life and in death you have won my heart go ahead and pray those of you in ministry pray I refuse to teach lies I refuse to deceive God's people. I spend time with the word. I spend time in prayer. I get the Rema word of God. I stand for truth. I stand for righteousness. I stand for grace. That the anointing of the spirit that the prosperity of heaven that the blessings of God will find expression pray we are praying tonight we come out from among them we will not bow to bear we will not mix fresh and salt water we receive grace 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 to be generous in thee grace to be generous in thee hallelujah 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 now you are going to pray for yourself and say lord i dedicate my giftings my skill my ability to serve only you whether you are a musician whether you are a celebrity you are a five pointer open your mouth say it don't look at me pray say lord from today i will never use my giftings my anointings my ability to serve satan no matter what it will cost me no matter what it will cost me in business in ministry in your family life pray I live for Jesus I serve him alone I serve him alone no compromise everything that is not of God Lord take it away from me whatever 
any fame, any prosperity, anything that is not of God, any association, take it away. Let only Christ be glorified. Any marriage, any relationship, any friends, associations, groups, sects. I love you more than silver or gold. I mean it. I mean it when I love you. Hallelujah. God is raising the end time army of real Christians. And that's our job. Finally, we are going to pray for the church in Nigeria. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your man of God. Pray for me. Pray for all the leaders. Say, Lord, keep them. Those who are already in apostasy, don't condemn them. But say, Lord, deliver them. Let light shine out of darkness. Come on, pray. Lord, we pray for your servants. Let light shine out of darkness. Every man of God, every church worker, Lord, we pray in Zaria, in Kaduna, in the north, in Nigeria Lord we pray redeem their soul from the deceit of Babylon redeem their soul in the name of Jesus Satan the Lord rebuke you we pray for every church in Zaria Lord that they will stand for truth we pray for the men of God money not take the attention from you. Fame, power, charisma will not take your Shadabaka brother Lord step in in your mercy. Step in in your mercy and redeem the ministers our businessmen redeem those in authority redeem our bishops our apostles our pastors our leaders that Christ alone will be Lord that we will love you above and beyond the things that you give us Listen to me. I was coming in from Abuja this evening. And while I was coming, I was just talking with the driver. Only two of us. And something happened. A car just came. Nothing was wrong. Brake did not fail. Nothing happened. This car just came to hit us. And then it moved in front of us and rode right into a ditch. I watched it. It moved right into a ditch. I just stretched my hands and I said, Lord, mercy. Mercy. That was all I was saying. How that it happened, nobody died in that car. Not even a scratch. But I looked and the driver told me. He said, I've never seen a very strange guy like that. And he was speaking to me, a different person. I took him from Abuja. And he was telling me, he said, shortly before this car came, suddenly he had a vision. Just in a split second, like an accident. And then I told him, I said, 
there are some people that are too jealous in the hands of God God would rather a nation die for their sake this is the true basis of immunity in the kingdom not this I shall not die thing no there is how you can be so useful to God that God will swear by himself to defend you hallelujah and while I prayed this morning the Lord gave me a prophetic word to announce to the house I never speak a thing until God tells me the Lord told me something he said son for half of this year you have seen great grace he said tell the people to brace up for glory tell the people to brace up for glory you will see things that will happen in the next few weeks that will shock you will cause your ears to tingle if i be a servant of god and if i be called by god i prophesy this into your life and i declare that you will see it happen in your life you will see it happen in your family you will see it happen in your ministry the lord told me to declare that it's a season beginning from this eight month an unprecedented level of glory of increase you will see prosperity like never before you will see expansion as a ministry as individuals in your businesses in your life in your academics i tell you the truth and i lie not the lord god of israel will confirm this in your life it's a season of glory that's what god told us at the beginning of this year he said great grace i'm not the kind of preacher that just sits down and laughs on the 31st and guesses what god is saying no it's in the bowels of much prayer and staying with the spirit if god does not tell me anything i have no business announcing things but let me tell you something you will see glory that will shock you i say this write it mark it if it does not happen i am not called of god the lord spoke to me this morning he said you have endured the season of great grace tell the people to brace up for glory brace up for glory you have trusted god you have enlarged your capacity we pray 21 days praying and fasting you have had the word i tell you prepare write it write it you will see it with your eyes shocking things will happen in this koinonia levels of grace you will hear men talk about it outside some will criticize it and say it's not of god some will say this kind of prosperity this increase cannot be from god but let it be that god declared it before the time lord we give you praise tonight we thank you for your grace we choose to be the true church deliver us all oh god from any form of apostasy let us be the true church oh i declare glory i hear it again in my spirit tell them it's a season of glory increase prosperity blessings restoration enlargement that's what the lord tells me to declare and i declare it as he speaks it into my spirit lord you will hasten your word to perform it and our eyes shall see and we will give you thanks hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time thank you so much for coming please quickly we're out of time we want to close so everyone can go home please leave your seat and just walk out here you are special inside and outside we appreciate you we celebrate you please clap for them as they come thank you thank you so much thank you for coming appreciate them as they are coming please find your way to the front don't be shy don't be ashamed inside and outside ushers help them ushers help them direct them